I'm Dr. Jeff Backus at Orthopedic One. I specialize in shoulder reconstruction and sports medicine. I practice out of the Hilliard office at Mill Run, Grove City, and Westerville. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about shoulder replacements, and that includes both a anatomic or normal shoulder replacement and a reverse shoulder replacement. So arthritis can affect any joint in our body. A lot of times in orthopedics, we treat shoulders, hips, and knees, and it's a very similar process. The end of our bones that meet one another, where two bones meet, is called a joint. And oftentimes that cartilage can break down. Well, that cartilage is articular cartilages, and as that breaks down, you will get what's called bone-on-bone -bone arthritis. Shoulder arthritis typically presents with both pain and stiffness. Shoulder problems are typically worse at night, including arthritis. And shoulder arthritis, especially early in the process, is not always associated with activity-related pain. Now, sometimes the shoulder will hurt while you're doing those activities, but arthritis oftentimes hurt after the fact. So patients might be able to go play some sports, or go golf, or do yard work, and then that night they really hurt, or the next day they're really having a hard time. The other thing is patients with arthritis oftentimes describe it as a constant ache, a toothache, if you will, that never quite goes away, but gets worse with certain activities or certain movements. And then as, a, as the arthritis progresses, they start to notice some limitations in terms of their motion. Arthritis is oftentimes worse in terms of reaching behind their back. So women getting dressed or fastening their bra, men reaching in for their billfold in their back pocket, all of those sorts of movement, movements behind their back become very difficult. And again, as that worsens and worsens, then it starts to affect the simple motions of lifting up to reach a plate out of the cupboard. A lot of times arthritis in the shoulder can be effectively treated by a lot of conservative care. Sometimes that's physical therapy. In my practice and in shoulder world, um, therapy can help early in the arthritis process. As people's arthritic process worsens and the mobility becomes less and less, sometimes therapy becomes less effective. Oftentimes certain medications can help, anti-inflammatories, Tylenol, and very oftentimes steroid injections or various other injections can be effective in treating pain. When that's not enough, sometimes we talk about replacement. Shoulder replacement surgery, those two types of replacements, the really deciding factor for that is the status or the function of the rotator cuff. Both a normal shoulder replacement or an anatomic shoulder replacement and a reverse shoulder replacement completely remove and replace the joint. So they both effectively take care and remove arthritis. For an anatomic or normal shoulder replacement to be effective, however, the patient has to have a rotator cuff that works and functions appropriately. So the rotator cuff are the muscles and tendons that move the ball and socket joint around. So whether that ball and socket is your native ball and socket or metal and plastic parts, it still relies on a rotator cuff to move the shoulder. So when someone has bone-on-bone -bone arthritis or severe shoulder arthritis and a rotator cuff that works, we're able to do what's called an anatomic or normal shoulder replacement. So the shoulder, the humerus is the arm bone. The end of that is a articular cartilage shoulder ball. And it articulates or it moves with the socket. And in a normal anatomic shoulder replacement, what we do is we remove the patient's native or normal ball and we replace it with a metal one. Sometimes that metal replacement has what we call a stem that fits down into the humerus or the arm bone, and other times we just replace the metal ball or the cap. And then to completely replace the joint, because remember we said a joint is ball and a socket, two sides, we replace the socket part with a little plastic cap. So it becomes a metal ball within a plastic socket. And again, that relies on the rotator cuff to then move the arm but it takes the pain away because the arthritis is removed. That surgery takes about an hour. Most of the times for shoulder replacements, I have patients go home the same day. Oftentimes patients will stay one night in the hospital. The recovery process is fairly straightforward. 
So patients wear a sling anywhere for about four to six weeks. So I let them remove the sling immediately the following day after surgery to start working on activities of daily living. So they can remove it to eat, they can remove it to drink, they can remove it to shower, to dress, to undress. So simple tasks, but for the most part, they are resting the shoulder for the first four to six weeks. Reverse shoulder replacements revolutionized orthopedic surgery and our treatment for these patients that had a really significant problem. So for these patients, they have a rotator cuff that is not functioning. So oftentimes that means they have a very large rotator cuff tear or a rotator cuff tear that has been there long enough that is classified as irreparable or one that we can't fix. Sometimes that's associated with a special kind of arthritis and oftentimes is that same bone on bone arthritis and they have a rotator cuff tear on top of that. Now, there's exceptions to all of these things. Sometimes we do a reverse shoulder replacement for fracture. Sometimes we do it when they have other health conditions or it's just severe arthritis alone. But traditionally, we do a reverse shoulder replacement when people have that combination of shoulder arthritis and a rotator cuff that is not able to work appropriately. So what's this reverse thing about? So we had talked about it earlier. A shoulder, a normal shoulder replacement is a ball and a socket. We replace the ball with metal and the socket with plastic. The reverse is those components or those parts are reversed around. So on our model, normally your shoulder socket sits on your shoulder blade side. The reverse part of the shoulder replacement surgery is, well, now we put the ball on the shoulder blade side. And in your arm bone or your humerus side, where normally the ball is, we remove the ball and we replace it with the socket on that side. So again, we're effectively removing and replacing the entire joint, both sides, but this time we're reversing the components. And this allows the arthritis pain to be gone because we removed the joint. And because of the design of the implant, it now allows other muscles to help lift and move the arm. And we're not as reliant on the rotator cuff, which isn't working. Similar fashion, a reverse shoulder arthroplasty takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Typically, again, patients either go home that same day or more often than not for reverse arthroplasty, so they stay in the hospital one night. The recovery is actually easier than an anatomic total shoulder replacement. So these patients wear a sling anywhere from a week to two weeks. Again, able and allowed to remove it the day after surgery immediately for hand, wrist, and elbow motion. They can touch their mouth, touch their forehead, shower, shave, bathe themselves, get dressed, and get undressed comfortably right after surgery. One of the most common questions I get uh, in talking with patients about shoulder replacements is physical therapy. Oftentimes for reverse shoulder replacements, I have patients do most of the exercises at home on their own. For an anatomic or normal shoulder replacements, sometimes we make a decision as we move along the process together whether or not whether therapy is necessary or not. I would say about 50% of my patients after a normal or anatomic shoulder replacement end up doing some physical therapy and then transitioning to the rest of it on their own. Both an anatomic or normal shoulder replacement and a reverse shoulder arthroplasty give patients the benefit of pain relief. I try to focus on that with all of my patients, that the main indication for either of these surgeries is pain relief. Shoulder arthritis is one of the most painful things we deal with in the shoulder. It causes significant pain. It causes significant loss of range of motion at times. Shoulder replacement, either option, is able to restore people's function for day-to-day -day activities, but also getting them back doing the activities that they enjoy. But most importantly, it should be a procedure that when they're recovered, the pain is completely gone.